Hi everybody, um, I'm here today to talk to you about fairies. Um, now there are actually hundreds of different kinds of fairies and lots of different theories on what they might be um, and we're going to get into that in a minute but I first want to talk a bit about the history of them. So one of the oldest fairy references on record in Europe actually dates back to the 12th or 13th century. However, fairies appear in both written and oral literature um, from other places all over the world even before that. So the Sanskrit Gandharva, um, nymphs from Greek mythology, even the Arabic jinn are considered fairy creatures. Um, there's actually also stories from the Samoans, from the Arctic people, and even some indigenous American cultures have references to fairy type creatures in their history. So this is really interesting because um, one of the things that I find fascinating is when you're looking into something, if there's a lot of different stories from different unconnected people all over the world that describe something similar, this is kind of compelling. And I, I definitely think it's really cool. So not all fairies are these beautiful pixie-like creatures that you see. In fact, historically, they were considered to be quite sinister. They were believed to be dangerous, and these were something that were um, that were feared, creatures that were feared. In fact, people would generally provide offerings when they were going traveling. Now, they would offer things like bannock, um, fruit and tobacco and in exchange they believed that the fairy folk would provide them good weather and safe passage on their journeys. Now if you didn't provide offerings and you somehow ended up on the wrong side of a fairy, um, you could expect things like bad weather, terrible storms, awful accidents, even things like death. So this was like very serious so now you can kind of understand why people might have been doing that. Um, they also believed then that even mentioning the word fairy could end up causing you to be on the wrong side of a fairy. So you might make a fairy mad by just referencing them. So they would call them things like little people, hidden people, good folk, and gentle people to kind of protect themselves from um, ending up making a fairy angry. There are so many different kinds of fairies and if I talked about all of them we would probably be here for about 300 years. Um, so I'm going to talk about a handful. We're going to start with the usual suspects, brownies and hobgoblins. Now these are guardian fairies. Um, these are the fairies that help with housework and do odd jobs. These are the fairies that are fixing your shoes. Um, these are very good fairies that aren't trying to hurt, they're trying to help. Um, however, they're believed to be quite hideous to look at. Now, if you do some research on them, you might discover that um, they don't have separate fingers or toes, and on their face, instead of a nose, they just have a hole. So they're very terrifying. But I mean, they're helping out around the house, so you know, there's that. Um, and then next we have goblins. Now goblins were considered to be malignant and they were supposed to be um, avoided at all costs. So that's goblins. We're not going to talk too much about them. Um, and then there are nature fairies. So there's lots of different kinds of nature fairies. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Um, but uh, a lot of them are possibly descendants from pre-Christian gods and goddesses. So if you start looking into fairies and you do a bunch of research, you might find that um, some stories parallel these god or goddess stories, or they will reference um, the god or goddess stories um, in these stories about the fairies. So that's something that's really kind of fascinating um, that you might want to look into some more. Now nature fairies are also considered the spirits of trees and streams and a lot of people that believe in fairies believe that they live under mushrooms, that they're in the forest, that they're with the rocks and, and the leaves and all of these things. So um, these are the kind of fairies that I like to think about because they don't sound that scary. So they sound really kind of cute and nice and, uh, and like something that you wouldn't mind running across in, in the woods, right? Um, but there's some scary ones out there. One of them is Will-o'-the-Wisp. Now I've talked about Will-o'-the-Wisp um, before and I'm not sure if it was on a video or at an event, but, um, but Will-o'-the-Wisp actually does have um, an explanation. Now this is um, 
fires that were caused by swamp gas. Um, but people refer to any kind of phantom fire or ghost lights as um, as will o' the wisp. So um, there's a cool one in Alberta. Actually, if you're in Alberta um, and you can get around Drumheller, if you go at night and look down into Horse Thief Canyon, you might see a phantom fire down there. Now, is that um, a will o' the wisp fairy trying to lead people astray? I don't really think so. Um, however, if you were there and you saw it and you decided that you wanted to go and kind of um, see where it's coming from or look for it, you would fall quite quite a ways. So, uh, so maybe. I mean, who knows, right? Um, but, but I have seen it myself. So um, if you can get out there, definitely go check it out because it's really, really cool. Um, but how does Willow the Wisp and these explainable things connect to fairies? Well, it's, it's really kind of simple. Um, a long time ago, when they didn't have these kind of explanations, they believed that these were marsh fairies that were leading travelers to their death in the bogs. And uh, that's really scary, obviously, to these people at these times, so they were very careful of this. Um, now, another interesting fairy that I discovered when I was researching this video is banshees. Now, I had never connected banshees to fairies, but some people believe that banshees are a fairy that appears to foretell tragedy. Now, a banshee is one of these creatures, um, usually a hag or a woman that you see, and, uh, and she's wailing or crying or screaming, and usually when you see her, something terrible happens. Now, when I was doing um, some research, I came across a story of a banshee that was described as a web-footed, one-nostril, buck-toothed hag that men would see um, washing bloody clothing um, just before they um, befell some kind of horrible tragedy. So something terrible would happen to them if they saw this woman. Now, this is um, one hell of a terrible insult to a woman just trying to wash her clothes, but... There you have it. Um, this creepy banshee possibly is uh, is uh, foretelling men that something horrible is about to happen to them. And uh, I don't really know if there's anything that you can do to prevent it once you see a banshee. So, um, but yeah, banshees might be fairies. And do you know what else might be fairies? Mermaids. Um, yes, when I was researching, mermaids fell under the category of fairies. So not all fairies fly. Some fairies might be swimming around in the ocean like the Little Mermaid. Isn't that interesting? And this kind of leads me into some of the theories about fairies, which are all kind of very interesting. Now, some people believe that fairies are actually just ghosts or spirits of the dead. So if you believe this, you might also believe that fairies have the ability to appear and disappear at will. So if you're in a haunted location and you see something that appears in front of you and then disappears, you might have had an encounter with a fairy and not necessarily a ghost, unless you believe that a fairy is a ghost, in which case you had a, an experience with a fairy and a ghost. It's all kind of connected and a little bit confusing, um, but there you have it. Now, not all people believe that fairies fly, but some people do. Um, and some people believe that fairies are actually fallen angels that were um, not bad enough for hell, but not good enough for heaven. So they just kind of fell here and this is where they live out the rest of their life. Now, people that believe this usually believe that fairies don't have a soul. And because of this, that's why they're going around kind of doing these um, these scary or, uh, or mean things because they're just kind of trying to cause as much chaos as they can before they die because when they die, that's just it for them, which is really very sad. Um, some other very creepy fairy facts. Um, so it is believed or was believed a long time ago that when fairies would have babies, if their babies would be unhealthy, they would take them and they would switch them out for a healthy human baby. Now these were called changelings. They would also do it with children. Um, and so when somebody would have a child that had some kind of health issues, they might believe that this wasn't actually their baby, that this was um, a changeling that had been switched out for their healthy baby. 
um, which is, if that's like super sad and creepy, um, it, it was actually believed that it wasn't just babies or children that could be taken and um, have a changeling left behind. Um, this could happen to grown-ups as well. In fact, in 1895, a woman named Bridget Clearly um, was murdered by her husband who swore that that was not his wife that he killed, that he had killed a changeling, that his wife was no longer here. Um, so that's really interesting. Now, when when fairies take people, it's believed that they bring them to a place called Fairyland. And this place is really, really quite terrifying. Um, and the legend is that if you eat or drink anything while you're there, you will not be able to come back. So if you ever get taken to Fairyland, don't eat or drink anything. Just try and figure out how to get back. I actually didn't look into how to get back from Fairyland if you're ever taken. So that might be something that you want to research um, if you decide to look into fairies a bit more. So people still believe in fairies to this day. Um, and so it, I, I found that really interesting. And this wouldn't be a good fairy um, video if I didn't talk about the Cottingley Fairies. Now, um, this story is old. It started in 1917, but um, the conclusion happened in 1983. So um, it's pretty modern day. Um, two little girls, Elsie Wright, who was 16 at the time, and uh, Frances Griffiths, who was nine at the time, insisted that they were playing with fairies. Now, when people didn't believe them, they produced five images of themselves in the garden playing with these fairies. Um, a lot of people did, still did not believe them. They thought that the, the pictures were not real, but some people believed them to be real. Some very notable people, including Arthur Conan Doyle, who actually wrote a book about his belief in fairies and how these girls offered this solid evidence to prove that fairies did exist. Now, his book is called The Coming of Fairies, um, and, uh, and these girls obviously had him fooled. But in 1983, Frances Griffiths, um, when she was 75 years old, confessed that the pictures that they pro provided um, as evidence of fairies were not real. They said that they cut them out of books and, uh, and set them up. And so these fairies were debunked. Um, and it's sad. It's sad that they weren't actually playing with fairies. It's sad that people feel like they have to make up these fake stories, this fake evidence in order to prove things to other people. We should all just kind of believe what we want to believe and leave it at that. But here we are. Um, and I mean, fabricating evidence still goes on now. So it's interesting. It was happening over a hundred years ago as well. So you know. Um, but anyway, there are some other stories that are more uh, modern from the 60s of fairies. In one of them, a woman in Somerset um, lost her way and she said that a small man in green clothing appeared by her elbow and led her back on track so that she could get home. And when she got home, she told the story to her husband. The story kind of got around and people believed that this small man that had helped her was a fairy. So that's something interesting. To me, it sounded like a leprechaun and maybe leprechauns are considered fairies too. Um, so yeah, but, uh, but another woman on vacation with her daughter, I came across someone who looked similarly who had a pointed hood, pointed ears, and he was green. Now, he scared this woman and her daughter so much that they fled back to their fairy, terrified. And when they explained the story to, um, to the people on the ferry, they were told that maybe they had had an encounter with a fairy. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... There's a there's still stories going on today, and actually today some people still believe in fairies. Um, some people practice something called fairy magic, so they work with fairies to do magic. Now this is not something that I would recommend um, anybody try unless you have a lot of knowledge around this um, or have done a lot a lot of research. So um, I'm not suggesting that people run out and do fairy magic. I'm just stating that some people in today's time 
believe in fairies and uh, and work with them to do magic. So that's um, kind of an interesting fact. Whether you believe or not, other people do. Um, most fairies now are kind of watered down. These are Disney fairies. Um, and these are in books and movies so that they don't scare the people watching or reading. And that's okay, you know. Um, but they still do have this really amazing history that uh, that I think is very fascinating. And we should all kind of look into it a bit more and not take everything just at face value, right? So look into fairies, but if you're afraid of mentioning them or, um, or looking into them without being protected, you can protect yourself from fairies with St. John's wort or yarrow. So if you're going to look into them and you want something, you might want to run out and grab yourself some St. John's wort and, uh, and use that to keep yourself from getting on the wrong side of a fairy. Um, yeah, and that's kind of, a, kind of it on fairies for right now. That's all I can fit. There's so much more fascinating information about these, uh, these little creatures. Uh, I definitely recommend everybody read about fairies, learn about them and their history and all the different kinds. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about fairies with me. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, if you've ever met a fairy, if you work with fairies, I want to hear all about it. So please message me, let me know. Um, otherwise, I will be back on another day with another video about something totally different. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.